Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you are all doing well today. And yes, welcome to today's Chelsea News video where I'm going to be talking about two stories. The first is I want to expand on the Pierre Emerick Aubameyang situation. Arsenal Football Club have cleared the player for a transfer. Cleared the player for a transfer. They've accepted the eventuality of a transfer. That'll do. Basically, Arsenal have pulled out of contract talks with uh, the Gabonese striker and they're going to let him go for the right price this summer. So I'm going to expand on that in just a moment. Also, I do want to pull up the Jadon Sancho situation again. Yes, I know it's been a while since I've spoken about it. And of course, it has been rotating constantly around football media for... I don't know, a long time. But there is a little bit of a sort of sobering wake-up call for everyone involved. Yes, Mr. Ed Woodward, everyone's favourite chairman of the Manchester United head honcho, he's come out and pretty much said some stuff recently that's quite, I don't know, sobering for United fans, probably Chelsea fans as well, probably just all football fans saying, look man, business is not as usual. I think he's kind of saying, look, we might not buy Jadon Sancho. Even though I've said in this channel before, this peculiar financial climate could be perceived as a buyer's market, and I maintain that, that's been stated by loads of sort of financial intellectuals, it could very well also be no one buys any expensive players. Because if they remain expensive, you can't buy them. It's only a buyer's market if the price comes right down. Anyway, we're going to talk about all that as well. So, big news generally, man, and we're going to crack open the Aubameyang story right after. I remind you quickly here to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so. Snuck it in. Cheers for subscribing, I appreciate it, and if you want to help me out, why not like this video, man? All right, let's get into it. Right, P, also known as Pierre emerick Aubameyang, leaving Arsenal. He's 30 years old. I get it, man. Like, he's an absolute marksman. He scores loads and loads of goals wherever he goes. Arsenal, they're a bit of a state, let's be real. I'm not even, like, trying to slate opposition fans here. They're, like, in trouble. I rate Arteta in many ways. I, I like the way he holds himself. I think he's got good ideas. Obviously, um, he's got he's going to have taken some good ideas from Pep Guardiola. I think he's probably the right man for the job, for the moment, for Arsenal, at least. But they are, like, in a state. And if you've got a 30-year-old gunman like Aubameyang, he knows he's not winning any Premier Leagues. Well, he won't be in the Champions League next season. Do you know what I mean? His career is... Well, his prime is in the autumn years, and you understand why he wants to move. Arsenal have got to the point where they're like, all right, mate, and apparently, reportedly, they've pulled out of contract renewal negotiations with Aubameyang. And on that, they have slapped a price tag on the striker of £56 million. Pounds. Straight away, you think, Aubameyang, £56 million. Meh. But then you think, hold on, 30 years old, one year left on his deal, mental financial climate. To be honest, man, Arsenal are supposed to be in a difficult spot financially at the moment. Um, and this has been published around football media for a while. They're trying to negotiate all sorts of stuff with money to try and stay stable, essentially, in many ways, because they've been lacking the proper, you know, European football money for a while now. So, yeah. The truth is, if someone comes along with, I don't know, 35, 40 million for Aubameyang. Who knows, maybe they'll be tempted to sell him rather than losing him on a free the following season. That 40 million pounds to no pounds could seem really, really good in a difficult financial time for Arsenal Football Club. 40 million pounds for Aubameyang, someone that you put maybe on a three year deal at his age, suddenly sounds pretty good, doesn't it? But 56 off the bat, that sounds a little bit too tasty for my liking. I, like many of you, think Aubameyang would be excellent at Chelsea. He can play in the striker role, obviously, score a bunch of goals, I'm sure. He can also play on the left flank really well and has a really good work ethic. He runs in behind, he scores loads of goals, he can score headers, you know, acrobatic goals, but he actually does have a really good amount of industry when he's playing down the flank as well in terms of getting up and down chasing down balls and pressing, all the kind of stuff that a coach like Frank Lampard would really appreciate. I also think a 30 year old wouldn't unsettle Tammy Abraham too much. He knows he's just a stopgap, he's a guy to score goals now and play, you know, in and around you. He'd teach Tammy Abraham a lot. Who knows, he might be gone within two years and then Tammy is the starting spot 
for the rest of, well, for as long as he wants, essentially. It could be perfect. But will it happen? I'm not so sure. Pierre Emerick himself came out and made some comments about how he would never go to Bayern Munich because he would not want to hurt the Dortmund fans. Interesting. Does he feel the same way about Arsenal going to one of their London rivals potentially? Like, well, Tottenham. I can't imagine he'd ever go to Tottenham. But maybe he feels the same way about Chelsea. Or does he not have the same affection to Arsenal as he has with Dortmund? I mean, that could be the case, right? Still, I'm not too sure. Me, personally, I'd be pretty surprised if Aubameyang ended up at Chelsea, even though I'd quite like it. I mean, I think we probably missed the boat in terms of getting in when Arsenal got him. We didn't take the risk, they took the risk, it paid off. You know the rest of the story. But I don't know, if, if it's for the right price, goals, man. I'll take him, but I don't see it happening. Next up, Jane and Sancho, the talk of the town, has made everyone bored and lose their minds over the last, I don't know, 12 months plus, probably. He would be the big expensive superstar signing of the summer. Or maybe Neymar, but I don't see Neymar moving definitely in this financial climate. We know Dortmund are completely fine with Jaden Sancho staying at the club, playing in the front three with Haaland, Hazard. They got loads of good forwards, and they could even challenge for a Bundesliga title next season. It's possible. Lewandowski one year older, you know, maybe they don't get Werner, Bayern Munich, and Dortmund could be in and around the mix. And the fact is, they know, again, with this peculiar financial climate, that they could probably, well, they'd probably end up selling Sancho for a lot less than they'd like to, and they don't necessarily need to sell him. Remember, they bought him for cheap. He's just worth loads of money now. So, maybe they just keep him, develop him for one more year till he's like the whopping age of 21. <laughs> Remember, he's still so young. And they go from there. Ed Woodward recently spoke out and commented that fans need to be realistic in how things are going to go this summer transfer window. I think he wants to prepare Manchester United fans saying, look, we can't spend 120 million on Jadon Sancho at the moment. So we might not, you know, or maybe he's saying that to not just the United fans, to world football media, to Dortmund. Maybe they're like, but we could spend 80 million on Jaden Sancho in this, you know, weird, turbulent time. The news stories regarding Woodward's comments are saying, you know, leaves door open for Chelsea, offers Chelsea chance, which I think is probably a little bit optimistic because if Woodward's saying it, Chelsea are probably not in the safest spot. I'm not, you know, ruling out any thing happening, you know, him going to United or Chelsea or even staying at Dortmund or whatever, anything can happen. The point being, Maybe everything is not as nailed on as we thought it was. If Jaden Sancho doesn't go anywhere, if he stays at Dortmund, suddenly Chelsea are... Because really, Manchester United are developing something relatively good. I don't think Solskjaer is a world-class coach, but I do think he's got some good ideas. Young, pacey, counter-attacking football in the Premier League. Getting rid of the old guard, getting like young legs in. Generally positive steps. I mean, it's not, a, you know, any sort of philosophical mastery or... Pep Guardiola's Tiki Taka or anything like that. It's kind of like pragmatism at its best. Bruno Fernandes, Pogba if he stays, Rashford, Martial, they've got good players in the United squad. So, you know, them getting Sancho would have been a concern in terms of one of Chelsea's direct competitors for perhaps behind first and second spot, you know what I mean? Suddenly, if they don't get Jadon Sancho, Chelsea look the stronger out of the two with Hakim Ziyech coming in. Because, you know, Ziyech is very, very high quality. People might not quite put him up against Sancho, but I tell you what, the guy's a baller and he's older and more experienced than Sancho. So suddenly Chelsea's front three of Abraham, Pulisic, Ziyech, uh, I don't know, Hudson-Odoi finding form again. It's all kind of positive. So if that happens... Chelsea are kind of in a stronger position than United. We'll have to see though, but I want to get your thoughts and opinions on the two players I've spoken about. Can you see Jadon Sancho staying at Dortmund and then perhaps Manchester United are forced by an alternative right winger? What do you think or what's your stance on Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang? 30 years old, probably would cost quite a lot of money. Uh, if Chelsea buy him, they might not be able to buy another younger striker to rotate with Tammy. Let me know your thoughts on Aubameyang. And also, I want to take this point at the end of the video, or chance rather, to talk to you guys about my other channel, The Anz Yard, where I'm doing daily, that's right, I'm putting the work in every single day at 6pm 
live FIFA 20 streams where I'm doing Chelsea career mode. It's loads and loads of fun. I stream about, you know, an hour and a half to two hours every night, talking to you guys in the chat about football generally, about the career mode we're doing. We're building a team together and it's loads of fun. So I'd urge you guys to go check it out. I'll leave a link in the top of the description. Do go subscribe and support your boy. Other than that, you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick. And then that's it from me, you guys. You enjoy the football that sadly isn't happening at the moment, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.